Hello everyone, thanks for today's first video, doing September month head forecast for today's first video. So we're going to have a review of August um, forecast first of all, then we'll do the September forecast looking at CFSB, Tuba Beijing, Climate Centre and the ECM WF uh, seasonal model as well. Uh, and then at the very end we will have a sleep peak for October. So today's second video, and this will be coming up on the homepage later on this afternoon, we'll look in detail at the weather for the next week to 10 days. It kind of takes us up towards the middle of September, so we'll already be discussing the first half of uh, September within the uh, week to 10 day uh, videos. But this, of course, is the month head for 30 day uh, forecast. So uh, just to say that... Um, the August forecast, I think it went reasonably well. Uh, we predicted temperatures to still be warmer than average during uh, August, and generally still dry than average, but less dry and less hot than uh, the earlier part of the summer. So um, what happened there is that uh, we expected the central temperature to come in uh, above 17 degrees for August. Actually, it came in a little bit below 17 degrees. I show you the city. I can't show you the UK wide temperature anomaly maps for August yet. We're still waiting for them to come in at the UK Met Office. Uh, I think they'd normally be in by now, but I think the weekend has just held things up. So as soon as we get those UK-wide uh, anomaly maps, I will bring them to you. Uh, but I can bring you the century temperature for August. So it came out at 16.6 in the end, an anomaly of just under one degree uh, above average, above the 61 to 90, 90 average. It would actually be closer to average in terms of 81 to 2010. So only a little bit warmer than average, really, if we uh, was to use the more modern 81 uh, to 2010 average. And certainly a big cool down compared to uh, both June and particularly July. Of course, in terms of the anomaly to average, June was nearly two degrees above average. July was over three degrees above average. Very, very hot month in July. So in terms of anomalies to average, of course, overall, August did come out with a higher CET than June. It came out at 16.6. Whereas the June CET was 16.1. So the overall temperature for August was higher than it was for June. But the anomaly uh, was much, much less. June was nearly two degrees above average. August was uh, under one degree above 61 to 99, and even closer to average in terms of 81 to 2010. So I think we got, we got the broad things correct. We wait to confirm this for the UK-wide temperature anomaly. So I think we got the broad things co uh, correct for August. In that it was a cooler month compared to the rest of the summer. It was also a more unsettled month compared to the rest of the summer. Even though it wasn't overly wet, wasn't overly cold or cool, uh, it was nevertheless uh, a deteriorating summer month compared to what had gone before. And that's basically what we predicted for the August month head forecast. So I think overall, although we was wrong about um, the CT coming in at, uh, above 17 degrees, so I was a little bit, a little bit surprised uh, how much of a cool down there was in August. Actually, we expect a cool down, but probably not as much uh, of a cool down as actually occurred. Uh, but nevertheless, I think overall the August forecast was reasonably uh, accurate, it's reasonably okay. So I'm quite pleased with how the August forecast uh, panned out. So we go on to September, and this is a 700 bit of our height anomaly from CFSB2 for September. And this is what it's showing, above average heights through uh, the UK and also going up to Scandinavia again and extending out into the Atlantic. This has been the pattern of the summer. This has been going on ever since May, uh, and CFSB2 is just continuing this pattern through September. So we've got the blur ridge heights with jet stream locked in around Greenland and Iceland, this big ridge extending from sort of Newfoundland across the Atlantic into the UK, into Europe, and then actually, if we go over here, it actually backs into uh, much of Russia as well. So it's an incredibly large, extensive ridge of high pressure there covering much of the Northern Hemisphere, and the jet stream is shoved off way to our north. North. So that's right, we're in for a very settled September, lots of high pressure, lots of warm, dry conditions continuing uh, through September. Uh, this area down here, though, is a little bit interesting. Uh, that is the tropical Atlantic. It is going for below average heights from the west coast of Africa 
into the tropical Atlantic. That is indicative of a gathering uh, sort of tropical storm season. So it'd be a very quiet start to the Atlantic tropical storm and hurricane season. That showing things are starting to liven up through the tropics during the course of September. And that's always what makes September such a difficult month to predict. These tropical storms could go that way. And uh, so they would never really have any impacts on our weather. We would just remain under this ridge. But if those tropical storms was to start curving in that sort of direction or start moving up the eastern seaboard and getting caught up in the jet stream somewhere to the south of Greenland, then that can have big impacts on uh, the UK and European weather scenes. So it's always one of the factors that makes September in particular, also to some degree October, but particularly September seems to always be a very difficult month to forecast for due to developments in the tropical Atlantic. And it does look like a quiet start to the tropical Atlantic season. The uh, the hurricane season is going to start to ramp up a bit. So uh, that's going to mean there's an added level of uncertainty about this September forecast, I think. They have got a very strong signal from the CFSB too, the high pressure to be dominant. Now, the temperature anomaly from the CFS V2 for September is uh, looking like this. So, again, another significantly warmer than average month for much of uh, northern Europe. Most parts of central northern Europe coming out substantially warmer than average. For the UK and Ireland, actually, we're closer to average. Maybe surprisingly so, given the strong anticyclonic signal. But uh, remember, in September, it's not like in high summer, where if you get an area of high pressure in July, it will all, nearly always be very warm or hot. In September... It does depend really very significantly on the exact nature of the air mass. You are not guaranteed desperately warm or hot weather with high pressure in September. It will be pleasantly warm because the sun still has a bit of month to it, although by 23rd of September, the sun will be down on the equator, uh, and beyond the 23rd of September, the sun will be in the summer hemisphere. So the sun is rapidly losing its strength, and that's the reason why it does depend very greatly in September, the exact nature of of the air mass. So despite the high pressure, actually temperature anomalies for September are only coming out close to average. But I suspect given the synoptic pattern, given this pattern that the model is going for during September, that's probably a bit on the pessimistic side. If that pattern came off, we would probably come out with a warmer than average month. And also a very, very dry month indeed from uh, CFSD2 being predicted again. So um, another really dry uh, month to add to the list of dry months that we've had. Yes, August was a little bit more unsettled compared to June and July. But nevertheless, it was still a bit dry on average, I think. Most parts can't remember we're waiting to confirm that with the um, anomaly maps of UK met. But I think particularly England and Wales, came out with a uh, rather dry than average month in August, even though it's a little bit more uh, unsettled. And that goes on into September as well. And the reason that happens is we've got this big ridge from the Atlantic. It extends over the top of the UK, and then it goes off into Scandinavia. And it also covers much of Central Europe as well. The jet stream, therefore, is up there. So we come out with near normal temperatures, uh, but I would suspect if a pattern came off, as a model expects, it would be a warmer than average month and another drive than average September as well. What about the Beijing Climate Centre? Well, this is the 500 millibar height anomaly from the Beijing Climate Centre for the next 30 days. It's taking us from the first day of uh, September through to the final day of September. And we find that we've got above average heights again, extending from the Atlantic into the UK. And then we also go off into uh, Europe as well. The below average heights, low pressure jet stream are up to our north. So both miles are in agreement, actually about September being a very anti-cyclonic uh, looking month. Temperature anomalies are coming out warmer than average. This is more like what I'll expect given the uh, forecast 500 millibar high to with all that high pressure. So it comes out above average. Not as big an anomaly as we had earlier in the summer, but nevertheless, we're still talking about sort of one degree or perhaps a bit more above average. So a warm September being predicted there. And also, with all that high pressure, not be surprised to know the Beijing Climate Centre is also going for a drier than average September as well. So both models are in agreement about high pressure dominating this September, giving us a warm and dry, uh, a warm and dry month. 
The ECMWF looks like this. It's the mean sea level pressure anomaly from the ECMWF. This is from the website weather.us. It's the mean sea level pressure anomaly for, uh, for, uh, for September. Uh, and we find that uh, it's a little bit different to the other two models. It has above average heights, more centred in the middle of the Atlantic, really, a little bit away from us, not quite centering over the country, with some below average pressure, some low pressure, actually, to our north. And so we just have a little bit more influence from the jet stream there. That is not as settled or as warm as the CFSB2 and the Beijing Climate Centre uh, would be. I mean, it's not really unsettled, but it is certainly uh, a little bit more influence from the jet stream, a little bit more influence from the low pressure, less influence from high pressure, which is kind of centred in the uh, to west of Ireland in the Atlantic. So it's not a desperately unsettled chart, but it's not as settled as the CFS and the Beijing Climate Centre. Temperature anomalies with the ECMWF for September are coming out uh, close to average again. And that is more like the temperature anomaly I expect, given the uh, pressure anomaly that the model is showing. That makes sense for it to be close to average, cooler than average out in the middle of the Atlantic. So not a particularly warm month. Uh, if that's right. And then the precipitation anomaly, it's a bit of a mixed bag, but it does look a little bit more unsettled compared to the other two. So we've got England and Wales actually coming out a little bit drier than average, but northern and western parts of the country are actually coming out a little bit wetter than average. And overall, it's just a slightly cooler, slightly more unsettled, slightly more influence from the low pressure and the jet stream type setup for September compared to the other two uh, models. So it's a little bit, a little bit uncertain this September, as it always is for September. Because I explained we have the influence of the tropical uh, Atlantic, and that always adds an extra layer to September of uncertainty. I think overall we're going to go for another warmer than average month. Another milder than average month looks probable, and probably still another drier than average month as well. But I don't think it's going to be as clear cut as plain sailing as the CFSV2 and Beijing Climate Centre are implying. I think we will have periods of unsettled weather this September. It's not going to be continuously dry and hot, I don't think. We'll have periods of cooler and more unsettled weather alternating with drier, warmer, milder periods. So in many ways, probably a classic September, really where we're seesawing between summer, which doesn't want to leave, and autumn, which is knocking up the door. Uh, and, of course, in the end, autumn is going to win. And I suspect as we get further on into the month, the further we go into the month, the more chance I think we have that it turns more unsettled. So particularly, I would say, the last week to 10 days could turn a lot cooler and a lot more unsettled. If that happens, actually, we will probably come out only with near normal temperatures and precipitation. We may open the door a bit to the Atlantic. We might even get a northerly shot at some point towards the end of the month. Might bring down some uh, sort of Arctic air and really go into... Uh, really going to uh, autumn. That's just a low risk scenario, but I think it's going to be that kind of month where we will be seesawing between summer and autumn. And the further on we go with this month, the more chance we have of it turning unsettled. The other caveat, of course, is the uh, hurricane season. If that really starts to ramp up, uh, and it's been a very quiet start to hurricane season, but if it really starts to ramp up, then we come out probably with a much more unsettled month than this for forecast is implying. So overall, yes, I think we come out with a, a warmer than average September again. The long, prolonged spell of uh, milder than average months continues. Haven't had a cold than average month since March. I think September is another warmer than average uh, month. Not as big an anomaly as we've had through the early part of the summer, though, so probably coming out with anom uh, an anomaly very similar to August around a degree or a bit uh, under a degree above average. Uh, and then as far as rainfall is concerned, probably still a little bit drier than average, but expect unsettled periods. And we may, if the hurricane season really starts to ramp up by the latter stages of the month, we may go into uh, really quite a wet spell. Wouldn't be overly surprised if that happened, but it's a low probability risk. So I think still going for a slightly drier and slightly warmer than average September with all of the caveats uh, added in. 
I nearly forgot to show you October, so very quickly before I sign off, let's just show you the 700 millibar height anomaly from CFSV2 for October. And you've guessed it, it's still going for high pressure for above average heights to be over and to the east of the country. So the CFS does not see any way out of this high pressure at the moment. And as I say, we've been in it basically since uh, May. Uh, it sees no sign of getting out of it up to October anyway, so still has that high pressure dominating over and to the east of the country. But given the uncertainty that we've got at the moment for September, I think uh, it's best to uh, leave October alone for the time being. So, in the final analysis, the uh, Gaza mid September 2018 forecast is for a slightly uh, warmer and drier than average September, but there will be changeable periods, so we'll alternate, we'll seesaw between dry and warm summer like spells and cooler, wetter, more autumnal spells. Uh, and as we go further on, the further on into the month we go, I think the greater the chance that we turn things more and more unsettled. So I would expect the final week, particularly of September, might unleash a proper spell of autumnal weather. Don't rule out the chance of a bit of a northerly shot towards the end of the month as well, which could turn things quite cold. Right, we'll be back later on with the uh, week to 10 day update. I'll bring you up to date with all the shorter range uh, models. Remember, long range forecasting is highly experimental, so it's just a bit of fun. Uh, really, it certainly isn't to be uh, relied upon. And uh, that's all for now, though, for today's first video. Come back later on for today's second video. Bye for now.